Looking at this question and looking at the statements, very annoyingly, it looks like we're going to have to convert 9 over 11 to a decimal and probably also 11 over 9 to a decimal that because of statement 2. Now, uh, I think it's a good idea to memorize what 1 ninth is as a decimal. And it's actually not that hard to memorize because you probably already know that 1 third is 0 0.3333 all the way to infinity. And if you didn't know that, you should. And then 1 ninth, well, we know that 1 ninth is 1 third of 1 third. And what's 1 third of 0 0.3333? Well, that would just be 0 0.1111111. So 1 ninth is 0 0.1 all the way to infinity. When you look at 11 over 9, again, this will be for statement 2, 11 over 9 is like 1 and 2 ninths. What I did there is I converted from an improper fraction to a mixed fraction. So 11 over 9, 9 goes into 11 once, and then there's a remainder of 2. So 1 and 2 ninths. And again, if 1 ninth is 0 0.11111, well, then 2 ninths is double that. It would be 0 0.22222. So 1 and 2 ninths, that's 1.22222 all the way to infinity. So that's what 11 over 9 is. Now, 9 over 11, that I don't think is worth memorizing. We're just going to have to figure that out on the spot. And how do we do that? Well, it's going to be 0 point something because the denominator is greater than the numerator. And so we have 0 point. And once you've established that, so I actually recommend starting to write down on your paper 0 point, now you can give the numerator a factor of 10. And that's really the trick for converting a fraction into a decimal, every time the numerator isn't big enough to divide by the denominator, you give it a factor of 10, and you compensate for that factor of 10 by moving one digit to the right in your decimal answer. So zero point, now I'm giving the numerator a 10, so it's no longer 9 over 11, it's actually 90 over 11. Now 11 goes into 90 eight times, so I take that eight and I stick it into my my decimal, my answers, I've got 0 0.8, but there's a remainder, right? 11 times 8 is 88. I have a remainder of 2 getting into that 90. So now we have 8 in our answer, 0 0.8, and we have remaining 2 over 11. So I'm going to give that to, again, a factor of 10, and the answer is going to go after the 8 in my decimal answer. So 20 over 11. 11 goes into 20 once, so I put the number 1 into my decimal, so we now have 0 0.81, but there's going to be a remainder of 9, right? 11 plus 9 gets you to that 20. So we are still left now with 9 over 11, which should seem very familiar, because that's what we started with, 9 over 11. So now I can say, since I'm back to where I started, that this is going to be a repeating pattern. We have 0 0.81 and it's just going to continue 81, 81, 81, 81, 81 for all eternity. So now I've converted 9 over 11 into a decimal and we already converted 11 over 9 into a decimal. Let's rephrase this question. What this question is really asking is, is the ratio A over B less than 0 0.81818181? Now statement 1 tells us that the ratio in question is less than 0 0.818, and I'm going to claim that if something is less than 0 0.818, well then it's definitely less than something that's bigger than 0 0.818, namely 0 0.81818181. If you draw a number line, you can confidently place 0 0.818 a little bit to the left of 0 0.81818181. So statement 1 is sufficient on its own, and we can eliminate the answer choices that claim that it's not. So B, C, and E are gone, and we're down to A or D. Now statement 2 is talking about the reciprocal of what the question was asking. So we could actually rephrase the question and ask, instead of, is A over B less than 9 over 11, we'll ask, is B over A greater than 11 ninths? Or using the decimal that we found earlier, is B over A greater than... 1.22222222 all the way to eternity. Now, why did I flip it from less than to greater than? Well, because we took the reciprocal of what the question was asking about. And 
when a fraction is less than something, the reciprocal of that fraction will be greater. Just as a quick example, if a third is less than half, three is going to be greater than two. That's, those are the reciprocals of one third and one half. And that's always going to be true. So is b over a greater than 1.22222? Now statement two tells us that in fact b over a is greater than 1.223, which itself is greater than 1.222. So again, if we draw a number line, we can confidently put 1.223 a little bit to the right of 1.22222. And now I can say that yes, if b over a is greater than the bigger of the two numbers, it's certainly greater than the smaller of those two numbers. And therefore, I'm going to go ahead and pick answer choice D and move on to the next question. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.